Average interest rate for mortgage loans among commercial banks is at 33.1 percent. Mr. Chum observes some institutions' attempt to link mortgage loan interest rate to the dollar and inflation have done little to salvage the situation. Ghana home loans now GHT back. Because of some of these challenges, we've had mortgages given as high as 36% per annum. And let's look at the effects, 36%. I took a simple example, 100,000 Ghana cities, which will not buy you a house anyway. But 100,000 Ghana cities mortgage at 12%, Per annum, for a 10 year period, you will have to pay 1,053 Ghana cities a month. If we take this to 25 years, to 25 years, sorry, at 12%, you pay 1,435 CDs a month. If you extend the mortgage period from 10 years to 25 years, you will be paying 1,053 CDs a month, which is a reduction of 36.22%. So your monthly payment reduces by about 36%. Now, let's take this same mortgage at the 36 percent being offered now. At 36 percent, for 10 years, your monthly payment is 3,089 cities. 3,089. And for 25 years, it's 3,000 a month. What it means is moving it from 10 years to 25 years reduces your monthly payment by only 2.95% because of the high interest rate, 2.95%. Meanwhile, you have had yourself entangled with this mortgage for additional 15 years. So increasing the period of the mortgage only increases the misery of the mortgage job and nothing else. Some of these institutions have tried to find a way around it, either by linking it, the mortgage to the dollar, or linking it to inflation. But whatever way you look at it, once you are, your income is cities, linking it to the dollar does not help because of the depreciation of the city. And linking it with inflation your income may not also be linked with inflation. Now the secondary market. Property resale has not been the order of the Ghanaian, ordinary Ghanaian. Because of the traditional belief that we bequeath properties to, to generations. And the egoistic attitude that when somebody is selling his house or something, then he's running broke, does it? So if he's over your town in the area. So even when somebody has properties and he's, he needs money, he will not sell. Luckily, or fortunately these days, because of the entry of banks and others offering mortgages and coming with foreclosures, we have seen the secondary market coming up. In 2017, the government constituted a 20-member technical committee to review the draft of the Ghana Building Code. He called for a swift review to ensure a robust regulatory framework that would guarantee easy compliance. It's our hope that it will 
we done expeditiously. And at the minimum, we will have minimum standards that will be applied to the quality and durability of construction materials. We will have site safety and hazard free construction and buildings. Clear standards on fire protection, building services, and adequate consideration of the Disability Act. Strengthening of local authorities to effectively provide the requisite approvals and process re relevant to permitting for development of infrastructure. Again, if Honorable Minister, since you are representing the MMDs, we know that before one can build, he needs a building permit. And without a building permit, any structure is illegal structure. And the law empowers the MMDs to remove them and surcharge the enclosure with the cost of removal. I don't recollect the last time this was done. Apart from estate developers who are protecting the islands, it looks like at this point the MMDs are failing the, the, the real owners of land of their users. Mr. Chum urged real estate developers to hire services engineers to oversee installations in order not to incur extra cost. They came for a feasibility tour or a study tour. And I told them, I advised them that if they are going to do any massive real estate, they should go elsewhere to look for services engineers. Because that is our major, major problem. We finished a new high-rise building. The first month we enter, plumbing problems setting, air conditioning breakdown, a whole lot of things. But when, for a few times that we have gone for South African service engineers, we have had no such problems. So that is one area you have to look at. Again, our architects, our architects, they never produce detailed construction drawings. And personally, I don't know why. Well, for most of those I have dealt with, it is in the course of the construction, when the contracted demands, then they will produce. I can talk of a project that was designed in Japan. And that project was finished with only one variation because every detail was provided. And the construction drawing was as huge as this. Every single detail was provided. It had only one variation throughout the construction. But where you don't have enough detail, then the variations set in. Lack of project management skills and techniques and reluctance to read tender documents were also fingered among contractors. Their inability to raise money on their own was found to be detrimental to future contracts. When the essay development concept started in Ghana by private developers, they were using mostly who be and purchases money to do the construction. So you sign off and say you make 20% or 30% down payment. You pay. When the structure gets to say lentil, they say you come and make this before we continue. When it gets roof, you come and make it. So virtually, they were taking the purchases money to bail for them. 
it worked because it was just a few. Now we have had many players in the industry. We now have ready-made houses for purchase. So we can't rely on these uh, depositors' funds to do construction again. But traditionally, Kenyans have built their houses through what we call the drip feed method, where from their own resources, every time that they have excess money to spend, they go and put it in their project. So their house can take 15, 20 years to finish. This is not sustainable development, construction. Money get locked up for 15 years before we start getting the benefits of it. <clears throat> Snit hasn't had a major challenge with construction finance. And it's because we devote budget to whichever project we will do. So before the project starts, we have a budget for it. Our major challenge has been the ability of the contractors to secure enough funds for construction. We will give maximum 20% of the contract sum as mobilization, except special projects involving huge equipment that have to be imported that we will give additional. And this 20% mobilization is recoverable. That means the contractor will put in the 20%, put in an IPC, and is paid. Then he continues. But between when he uses the mobilization and gets the next payment, he needs to continue working. Permit me to use E4 to represent contractor. The ladies. I hope I'm permitted. Or as you use she. So the contractor needs to have his or her own funds to do the construction before he gets the next payment. Most of our contractors, uh, it appears they don't have a single CD of their own. So they put in your money, put in the claim, and sit down and wait. If you haven't paid, they can do the next. Currently, we have contractors working on projects which worth over 2 million Ghana cities, who can raise on their own 4,000 Ghana cities. 4,000 Ghana cities. A 2017 nationwide survey by the Ghana Standards Authority revealed more than 70% of all imported electrical cable brands in the market were substandard and could cause fires. Mr. Chum was, however, worried the authority is here to take action. Though he advocated local material use in construction, he was doubtful of his sustainability. Ever since this was discovered, I'm yet to see what Ghana Standard Authority has done. They are in the market. They discovered that 98% are substandard. They can cause fire, whatever, whatever. What has happened? Who knows what has happened after they discovered that they are top standard? They are still there. They are still being sold. People are still buying them. This is the only country I know where half means different and 12 means different. You go to buy iron rods. You say you want half inch. They say, which one do you like? We have three sizes of half-inch iron rod. What half is different from another half? Yet we have this in the system. We have those who are supposed to check these standards. So because of this, designers 
our experience now, the designers now, they tend to overpower the design. So that when the contractors cut the corner, it will come to the actual. We also tend to import, depend a lot on imported materials. And because of uncertainty in the delivery, we, uh, we, we get these projects sometimes affected. Where we say we are using local materials, their supply also becomes a challenge. I will give an example here. When we were doing the uh, phase two of Sudan Coast there at Lego, these were three big structures, each one taking uh, over, taking a thousand beds and being handled under three different contracts, but two different contractors. Legon has a character of their roof. They use the clay bamboo type. So that is what was to be used. We started, we got to the roofing. For the trade contrast, they started the roofing. Five months into the roofing, none of them have got supply of the clay tiles to cover a third of their structure five months into it the national construction summit brings together players in the industry to deliberate on issues affecting the industry and the way forward this year's summit is under the theme 60 years of Ghanaian construction industry uniting for industrialization provost of the college of art and built environment professor joshua Yakwa expressed the conference to address the infrastructural gap bedeviling the country's development drive. And the Ghanaian construction industry has over the years partnered other key stakeholders across finance, insurance, real estate, construction and consulting, plant, equipment and material supply, gov government agencies, research bodies, academic institutions, professional bodies to name a few to contribute to the growth of this nation. Over the years, vital social and economic infrastructure projects such as roads, railway, water supply and sanitation, power transmission, our shelters, schools, offices, hospitals have all been realized through the efforts of the Ghanaian construction industry. The college had its first open day, an exhibition. Yeah, so one of the major major issues confronting the nation now is how to define housing affordability or affordable affordable housing. And recently at the Center for Settlement Studies, we undertook a study especially looking at the informal low-income areas. And so if you look at this, uh, we are looking at Atosu community. We had a, a Ijazongo community, and then we had a Asawase community. And so what we did was that we took data from the households in those communities to establish their income levels and also the rent that they are paying for their current housing situation and use that to develop the ratio to find out in terms of proportion how much they are spending on rent. According to the national housing policy, housing affordability is defined as spending not more than 30% of your uh, income uh, on housing. In terms of expenditure, the expenditure should not exceed 30% of your income. So we try to establish how much these uh, people living in these areas are spending on housing. And if you look at, for instance, Atosu, this particular one, rent per income, you find out that in their current situation, on the average, they were spending 9% of their income on housing.
But then, if you take a typical standard two-bedroom two house and use the current rate of rent, that will come to about 36%, which means that if you are to, you are to house them in any of the standard housing, they cannot pay for it. My name is Dr. Fa, and I'm from the Department of Construction Technology and Management. And for what we have here, we are showcasing the use of timber construction, I mean, showcasing the use of bamboo as a substitute to timber carcasses. Research has come to prove that timber, when properly um, processed, can stay for as long as 500 years without it getting spoiled. So if we have such a material which can be used in place of timber, why don't we exploit it? You're welcome. Uh, this is Integrated Rural Art and Industry Science, the metal fabrication technology section. Yes, what we do is to you know, um, promote rural technology. So if you are promoting rural technology, you use rural materials, materials that are commonly you know, known by you know, our rural people. So you know they cook with these saucepans. Now, yes, yeah, some of you have more exotic ones, but what they know are these. Yes. yes, when you use them and they are spoiled, you can cut them into half, and this is what you can get out of it. So what you see here, it's a, it's a flower vase. It's also a candle stand at the same time, wow. coat hanger. So it can serve three purposes in your living room. Yes. So what you yeah. see here, aluminium sheets, and these are the, you know, so local spoons. Can it move like that? Oh yes, it moves. Yes, when you put the battery in it, it works. Yes. Yes. This is a chandelier. Oh my God. Yes. And when you go to the chop bar, this is how they fetch your soup with. I hope yes. you know that. Yes. So that is salt yes. has been composed. Then this is half of the, the that bowl for preparing shito. Yes, so this is half of that. Then the you know. concept for today is developing a smart house, which is going to be energy efficient and will also be cost effective for an estate manager. So with this module, we control or we, we control appliances and electrical contraptions using voice recognition um, commands and also light sensitive modules. So you can you realize that in front of our module, we have two lights, which represents the balcony light. So these lights normally are switched on when there, when there is darkness and they are switched on, they are switched off when there is light. And we realize that mostly for companies and other estate, um, other estate properties, you get to realize that these balcony lights have, these balcony lights do not get switched off, especially in the morning. Because I don't, I don't really know why, but then most of the times you get to realize that that is the situation. And because of this, it drains a lot of electricity and it becomes very um, costly when it comes to expenditure. So we designed a light sensitive module. Installing such an automation in one's home or in a company or commercial property might be a little bit expensive at first, but we are looking at the long run um, effect here. Realize that with the normal burglar proof, which we design with iron rods, uh, it has been difficult to create an opening so that in the case of emergency, one can escape. And also, in respect to even the LI, the building regulations, LI 1630, which oblige us to have an opening. Apart from the doorway, every building should have an opening that one can escape from.